Welcome along. You've logged on to attheraces.com and you find us here looking forward to the Cheltenham Festival. We're into Friday afternoon now and for the novices we step up in trip to three miles. The Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Once again this race looks wide open. David Pipe, a major chance of winning it. Here's some of the key contenders. Every single time uh, Karki Lepre's jumped that flight, he's jumped it well. King's Palace is still out in front. Karki Lepre being strongly ridden to try and challenge. Over in third is Billy No Name. King's Palace is still in front as they approach the final flight of hurdles. And he's over. Two lengths clear. Karki Lepre trying to throw down a challenge. King's Palace wandering around. Karki Lepre senses the opportunity. King's Palace drifting over to the near side. Karki Lepre trying to get by. A length between the two. King's Palace slow in front. Karki Lepre trying hard but can't get past King's Palace. King's Palace beat Kaki de la Prey. A break then to Very Wood, and on the near side, Briar Hill comes up now. Apache Jack is still battling on on the inside. They're coming down towards the final flight, and it's Briar Hill, Apache Jack on the inside. Over the last, Briar Hill leads Apache Jack. Very Wood a couple of lengths further back on the climb up towards the finish. It's Briar Hill in front of Apache Jack and Very Wood, and running up towards the finish. Briar Hill, driven out, goes on to score by three lengths to Apache Jack. It's Faheen from The Job Is Right at the second last. Faheen is over. The Job Is Right is trying to close the gap. They're clear. Bad mistake. The housekeeper's on shift and hampered as Orion. But going to the final flight, it's Faheen from The Job Is Right. Making the way towards the last. Faheen is steadied right into it and jumps it clear from The Job Is Right. A second and going up towards the line, it is Faheen who's in a different league heading towards the line. Faheen in the Richie Colours for Willie Mullins and Emmett Mullins. Take this in good style. Back in second is The Job Is Right. And it's going to be a battle for third. And Moonshine Lad and Paul Carberry coming there to join Gallant Tip. Monsieur Reef is putting in a renewed bid now on the outside of Gil Shadow. They're at the final flight. Moonshine Lad over in front. Sure Reef now staying on well on the near side. They're inside the last 200. And Sure Reef has come from the back of the field as they run up towards the finish. Sure Reef will win it for Ruby Walsh and Willie Mullins. Sure Reef beats Moonshine Lad. In third, Minella online. Tullieska Hill is back in fourth. Bajan Blue is in fifth. And the longtime leader, Little John, is in sixth. And in seventh, trying to stay on Dan's wee man. Inside the final furlong, the final flight for Deputy Dan is over safely. And a really well backed favourite is going to take the opener on Welsh National Day. His name is Deputy Dan. Well, he's the sheriff today. Deputy Dan wins. So the favourite for this race for some time has been King's Palace. Dan Barber from Timeform with, uh, with his assessment of this horse. Dan, just a thought. Paul Nichols was asked not long ago if he could have one other horse from someone else's stable to go to Cheltenham with. He'd pick this one, King's Palace. Wasn't aware of that, but it's, it's high praise when you consider the options he would have had. Maybe mm. just didn't want to pick a Mullins runner because they're such <laughs> rivals. Yeah. But yeah, you can't, you can't really fault him, can you? He's unbeaten. I think the the success that we saw at Fontwell was probably his least impressive. Well, certainly his least impressive, but he was a good horse in bumpers and he spread spread Eagle the field twice in Cheltenham novices, smashed Creepy the first time, did the same to Masters Hill when we last saw him and the sort of performance is that you, you can't really put a cap on the rating because he's value for extra on top of wide margin wins and he does certainly have the scope to think that he can do better again. I'm slightly concerned that his tactics that are likely to be employed may prove his undoing yeah. though. They'll want to get on with it, make use of his really fluent jumping. That's his best asset undoubtedly. Um, but will that count against him in trying to make use of that? Will he end up doing too much? I think you're spot on Dan. I think that could... That uh, Tom Scudamore is going to have to get things spot on tactically with this horse they're going to have to make it aren't they because this those tactics served him so well at the track before christmas yeah it, i have no problem generally with horses being forced for the ridden but it is harder to pull off in big fields competitive races where there are others that want to adopt the same tactics and there is absolutely no way they're suddenly going to drop this horse out and ride impatiently 
when they've seen him to such good effect ridden from the front and big pressure on Tom Scudamore to get that right because it isn't an easy trick to pull off. Yeah. Well, Bright Hill's back for more. The bumper winner. Uh, he is three out of three so far this year, and he won the Slaney Novices Hurdle last time. That's the race we're going to have a look at now. He was three to one on favourite and seemed to make quite hard work of it, though, Dan. I think that's just him, though, John. Uh, you look back to the champion bumper, and I heard a, a really good quote from Ruby Welsh about him in that day. He apparently was coming up with his excuses in the back straight as to explain to Graham Wiley as to why he'd been beaten and why the horse had struggled so badly. But the horse suddenly took off, and... For me, just doing no more than required in the Slaney here. Prior to that, he'd impressed around a sharper track at Limerick and scooted clear that day. I just think there's a massive engine there. He's a horse who will never be flashy, but I think he finds so much for pressure. And much like he did at Cheltenham last season, I can see him just raising his game the hotter mm. the competition gets. King's Palace to tow him into the race, likely to set it up. He looks to have boundless stamina as well. And if I was... If I was David Pipe and having to choose uh, another horse, if I was Paul Nichols and having to choose another horse as he's gone with King's Palace, I think Nichols might have been barking up the wrong tree. Mm, very interesting, isn't it? And it's far from just a two-horse race, but is, is one of those two going to be your pick? Yeah, I am a massive Briar Hill fan. Right. I yeah. think he's got bundles of stamina. He's a horse who has done no more than required so far, just keeps pulling it out and... Hard not to be impressed by the way he left Regal on Co for dead in the champion bumper last season yeah. on just the second start of his career on the back of winning a small, relative, you could say an egg and spoon bumper on his debut. He's, I'm sure we've only scratched the surface of this horse's ability. Bright Hill then getting a confident vote from Dan Barber from Timeform. That was our look at the Albert Bartlett novices hurdle. Keep it right here on attheraces.com.